Okay, it's officially 105. Um, so let's do it. Again, hi everybody. Um, welcome to the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Center open house. And so this is a crazy quarter uh, to say the very least. Typically we will be hosting this in building 22 um, at the Mottman um, uh, campus. Um, however, we are hosting this in uh, various locations, one of them being my home office and home studio. <laughs> so um, so what we're going to try to do today is just kind of walk you through what, what's available um, this quarter through the center, um, some of our programming, um, some of our services, and then open it up for questions and, and, you know, and then happily just discuss. Um, if you have any questions related to the content. So um, with that, um, who are we? So we are obviously a team of people who typically work in the space, but we've been working virtually to support students, staff, and faculty all together. We are comprised of peer mentors. There are four peer mentors this quarter. Uh, I believe we have two of them on the line. Um, actually, I got one. Uh, I'm going to put them on the spot because I think they were warned. <laughs> so, Vanessa, do you uh, mind just saying a quick hello, a little bit about yourself, who you are, um, what you're studying at SPACC um, for our guest? Um, yes, I'm sorry. I can't do the video right now. I'm using my phone and it's a little busted. Um, I, my name is Vanessa Anendu, and I'm a peer mentor. This is my second year. Um, I'm also an international student from Nigeria, and this is also my last quarter of nursing school. And I've been a peer mentor for two uh, two years now. Awesome. Thank you, question. Vanessa. Quick question. Um, yes. For those who are wondering, peer mentor, goodness, what is, what is that? You know, what can you tell them quickly, high level, about, you know, being a peer mentor? What is it? Um, it's basically like being... Um, like a kind of like um, a resource for students to connect with uh, other um, resources on campus. So you get um, the number of students you get varies per quarter, depending on how um, the student load that we have as Ignite mentors. We work close hand in hand with students to connect them to resources like the Matt Center, Tutoring Center. Um, we ask them how they're doing, just, you know, how their life's going and how the quarter is going for them. Um, we reach out to them once or twice every uh, week or two. Um, we check on them academically and personally, just to ensure that like, they're having a good time on, on college. And then we, uh, if they're like, lacking things like textbooks, we reach out to her, like, um, other resources and kind of connect them to resources or like the counseling center, uh, academic resources, the advising center, and just things like that. P pretty much like a, a friend, but geared towards helping them be successful on, on campus. Awesome. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, yeah, so she summed it up very well. It's the idea, peer mentor is, is your friend, your, your peer, you know, walking along the journey, the academic journey on campus with you. Um, and so they check on you um, and connect you to resources. Um, so we also have an ed planner, embedded ed planner, uh, or sometimes they're referred to as academic advisors. Um, uh, Amita, she's not here right now just because... Um, She's caught in, in walk-ins with uh, the advising department, um, but she works uh, primarily with the Ignite students. Um, and you heard that term, Ignite. We'll unpack that in a little bit, what that is. And then we have um, Quentin Neal, who is the um, assistant director of the center. Uh, Q, you want to say a little hello to our friends and um, anything else you want to you share about you and your role? Yes, thank you. Um, hello. Um, my name is Quentin. I go by Q or Quinn. Some people call me Quentin. That's totally fine, too. Um, so I'm the assistant director for the DIC, um, and my role is to support the peer mentors and student workers, um, and also just making sure that the students in general that are occupying the space um, are having a good experience. Um, and also on the front line for any issues as well, like that students are having on campus. Um, and so I am really that resource for you all. 
Um, and also, um, another part of my job is to make sure that students program program wise are having a good time and um, voices are inputted um, into what that looks like um, for a student experience on campus. So, um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about myself um, in supporting the center students and also supporting my supervisor. Awesome, thank you, Quentin. And as, as you heard, some of the things that Q mentioned there, just frontline support at the center as issues come up with students who, um, you know, need, need support. They, you know, he, he's definitely um, the contact, the resource to have. And then additionally, some of the programs, events, you know, he plays a critical role with some of our partners, um, like student life or counseling or even external community members uh, to put together programs and events that would help with a positive, a, a positive experience as a, as a college student. So, um, and then me, Parfait Basile, that's my name. I'm the director of the center and, you know, essentially just working in partnership with our peer mentors, with the, uh, Amita, our ed planner, and with Quentin and everybody in other departments to make sure that services that I'm going to be talking about in a little bit are effective, are working and serving your needs. Um, and also listening in to find out, you know, are there any other things that would be beneficial coming from the center and, and working with this team to, to make it happen. So, um, so I've been in this role for about three years now. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. So with that, that's who we are. What is our purpose? You might have already picked up on some of that. Um, so first and foremost, our purpose is student academic and emotional support. We want to be here for students to feel that they're supported academically as they're running into roadblocks or challenges or barriers. Um, and then for them to feel emotionally uh, connected, like feel like there's a sense of community and someone who cares about their emotional well-being um, so that they can be successful academically. So, and then number two, student advocacy. Uh, what that is, is, you know, it's very, it works in tandem with the, uh, the first bullet, you know, as barriers or challenges um, come up, we, we want to be able to advocate for students um, so that we can move those things out of the way so that they can reach their goals. Um, and then last but not least, you know, education and training. So part of if you were to think of a, a stool, a three-legged stool, well, those are the three pieces of the stool. Um, so education and training provide opportunities for learning for everybody, you know, students, faculty, staff, all together, you know, ways to get people more aware and informed about um, uh, systems of power, injustice, um, bias, you name it, um, just relevant topics that are impacting students' experiences so that people have less blind spots and be more intentional in the ways in which they interact and provide education and services to, to students. And so those are the our three main, main goals. And a lot of the things I'm gonna be listing fall in either one of those categories or a combination of those categories. Um, and so without further ado, how do we go about doing it? Uh, we have a set of core values that guide um, this work. And as you can see, and I love this, um, background picture of a bridge, looking at a bridge from, from underneath, you know, be the bridge is our motto, um, our, our value system. You know, as we do this work, as we provide trainings, we want to invite people to come as they are um, and be themselves. And we want that not only in the space that is historically located in building 22, but we, our, our hope is that any space, you know, now we are dealing with virtual spaces for a little while, but that any space be a space where people can show up as themselves. And as they do, offer the same sort of respect and, and, and permission for others to show up as themselves. Because as people show up authentically, there's a, there's a better, better interaction, better chance to actually learn and have genuine uh, connections than having um, you know, a fear of, of being judged, of being, um, of being vulnerable, et cetera. So, um, so we, we, we lead with that, be you, respect others, include everyone, having that, that, that state of mind of how, who's missing, you know, who else can be at the table, who else can be thought about, and then discussing all things, you know, 
topics can be overwhelming or scary or anxiety provoking, but uh, I am a strong believer that um, the things that we are wor- we are afraid of talking about are actually things that we need to talk about because that's where there are opportunities for learning and tra- transformation. Um, so we we bring up all topics, controversial ones, and you'll see in the list of our programs that. Um, there's this thing called hot top, hot tea, hot topics. It's really to tackle the things that may make us nervous, but we need to talk about it. That's on, the only way we can build our muscles around around some of those topics. And then guard from dehumanizing, right? Um, and the thinking there is, as we get into uncomfortable conversations, you know, we want to lead with this value of, you know, let's assume good intentions. Let's not dehumanize someone who thinks differently. Let's just hear them out because we've invited them to come as they are. And it's only in a respectful engagement and exchange that transformation can potentially happen. And then last but not least, the E in bridge is educate yourself and others. It's a thinking that um, we all have gaps and things to offer, right? So every lived experience is unique. Uh, every um, Everybody's journey has been very unique and through that journey, they've learned things that everybody else can benefit from. So when we have conversations, we really want to hear from folks. We invite them to share. But by the same token, you know, there's also gaps because no single human being could have gone through all experiences imaginable. And as a result, this, this, there are gaps in one's knowledge, insight. And so when we engage in conversations, we invite people to be humble, to be able to hear from someone else's perspective, someone else's truth. Um, and to help that impart, impart that knowledge to their, their, their own experiences. So, yeah, that's our value. Be the bridge. We invite people to be that bridge uh, and to be bridge builders uh, because that's the only way to, to cross the divide uh, between different groups um, and different tribes. So with that, um, you know, let's kind of unpack a little further academic and emotional support. Um, how do we provide that tangibly um, to our services. So one way is through the Ignite program. Um, if you have um, heard of the Ignite program, I'm really excited about that. We've done a lot of work to try to get the word out on, onto the campus and the community. But if you haven't, this is the first time you're hearing about it. Um, it's a program that's come about maybe, I want to say, um, two years ago. Um, and it is a student support program that is designed to provide, as you can see on the screen, a sense of community to its participants. Uh, it provides a dedicated educational planner. I mentioned her name, Amita, uh, earlier, who works with students to make sure they are on track with their, um, their, their courses uh, as they try to complete their degree. Um, participants in the program get assigned a peer mentor, like Vanessa shared about earlier, a friend on that journey to check on them, make sure that they're not, they're not feeling isolated and alone. Um, a laptop, if you need one. We have a laptop borrowing program in partnership with the library. And so students in the program, if they, they don't have a laptop, they can check out laptops um, in order to be able to study uh, textbooks uh, every quarter. They get the textbooks provided for, and then they return it. And then we are able to provide the same for the next student coming down the, uh, through the pipeline. Um, and the thinking there, again, is to remove barriers, right? Technology can be a barrier. Money to be able to buy the books can be a barrier. So we, we want to remove that. So that's been an institutional commitment um, to provide those services. And then early registration to classes. That is, again, uh, an attempt to help the students um, be able to, um, you know, not miss a class because they couldn't register on time and therefore now they're on a waiting list or the class is full. Um, we, we wanted to be able to provide them the opportunity to get into the classes that they need to get into. Um, and then there's a number of training that we provide as part of the, um, the pro, uh, program for students you know, around like how to build self-esteem. We'll bring some keynote speakers to empower, encourage, and inspire them. Um, and then we also provide just tangible skills like how to budget, you know, um, and things like how to manage stress and anxiety and things like that. Um, and, and yeah, so that's kind of what you get from Ignite and the students who are eligible for it. And I don't have a slide for it here, so I'm just gonna speak to it. Um, is if you are the first in your family history to attempt to get a college degree, you are eligible. 
to get into the Ignite program. So all you got to do is just fill out the application. I'll provide the link in a little bit. Um, if you identify as a person of color, um, you are eligible to get into this program. If you have a documented disability um, with our institution through Access Services, you are also eligible to get into the program. Um, if you qualify through financial aid to um, receive Pell Grant, you are also eligible to get this program. So there's multiple ways um, you can get into the program. But those are the different uh, the different doors into the program. Either first in your family history, so we call them first generation to try to get a college degree, or you identify as a person of color, or you have a documented disability, or you qualify for a Pell Grant. Okay. And then uh, after that, you apply to the process, to, to the, um, you apply online, and then you will hear from us um, in terms of moving forwards and the different steps around um, orientation and so forth. Um, so um, the other... I have a question for the Ignite program. Yes. Like, are Running Star students or international students eligible to apply for Ignite? Or, yeah. Great question. And, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, no. Um, international students, um, so in, in the beginning of the program, because it was a new program, we were figuring things out. And yes, international students who were, part of, who were able to be part of the program, but because of the, some sort of the, the different funding sources, there are being some limitations going forward to being able to provide um, the services to international students. Running starts um, are not able to participate in the program because there's a lot of similarities in what they get uh, in what is provided in the program. Um, the, a lot of the things that are provided in the program are very similar to what Running Start students receive. So there's kind of there would be a redundancy there um, and, du and duplicate efforts, if you will. So um, yeah, that's essentially the only exception of folks who cannot participate in the program: international students and um, Running Start students. And I would also say that international students have a dedicated educational planner, just like Ignite students. And so that's also to streamline that. So our international students aren't confused at which educational planner to work with. Um, so they, the, our, all of our international students have a dedicated educational planner that their main focus is then. Yeah. And, and thank you, Robert, for adding. And just there's so many layers when you think about it. There was just some complexity around immigration status that you know, the dedicated ed planner kind of uh, monitors. And so to, to make sure things are streamlined, uh, we've, um, we haven't allowed that. So the next um, program or service that the center provides, um, well, we haven't provided that yet. It's a new one that's coming uh, in the fall. Um, it's the Black Scholars Program. And very similar to the IGNITE program, um, as you can see, some of the bullet points are similar. Um, but I've highlighted some of the items that are different here. Uh, and so um, this is a program, the, the vision and the philosophy behind it is really to help close the achievement gap that our institution has been seeing over the last few, I mean, many years of existence. Is that um, black students um, at SPSCC are not completing or graduating graduating uh, at the same rate as their counterparts. And so in order to, to address that, um, the center is attempting to launch a program that will create a community and cohort of students who identify as black students in order to provide um, intentional community, um, you know, peer mentor, a professional mentor who, uh, who can give advice in how to navigate dominant culture, uh, some of the lesson learned and kind of empathize with their journey and then some very specific trainings and workshops um, to help develop resilience, to help understand historical context um, in order to help move that needle of, of completion, completion rates. So um, one of the neat things that was, we were able to work with the foundation is um, the receipt of $500 scholarship when students in that program will complete a 45 credits and more. Um, so this is a new program in this infancy. As we speak, we are still putting the pieces together. It's going to be launched in the fall. Uh, and so we're really excited about that and, and hoping that it will help move the needle. So um, the applications similar to the Ignite program are all online on our webpage. As you can see the link there. Um, 
that could be one, you know, Robert, if you don't mind, or Quentin, just kind of copying that and putting to the, um, the chat window. So for folks who want to, you know, kind of copy that, but that's, um, those are the dates. So applications for the fall. So we accept people into the program once a year. Um, so every fall is when enrollment happens. And so enrollment has been opened since January 3rd, um, priority deadlines May 15th, um, just for fast processing. And then uh, application closed on July 17th. Um, and then students who are selected will be notified by the end of July. And then we kind of give a buffer to hear back from students to confirm that they, yes, they really want to be part of um, the program and they have till August 1st to do so. Is that August 1st? My screen, there's something popping up on my screen. I cannot see. <laughs> Let's see here. August 14th, that's what it was. Um, and then the orientation for both programs will be um, the week before school starts in September, so 16th and 17th. And those are full day orientations and we work with the students um, to provide them with the resources, the skills that will help them be successful um, into the, year, the school year. So um, any, any questions with regards to these academic support um, pieces? Okay, so those, those they are right there. Um, and then in addition, so when we're talking about emotional support, those typically come through, you know, a lot of students come into our offices and we talk with them, we hear them, their struggles, and we make a determination whether to escalate or to refer them to a different resource, like Vanessa was saying earlier. Um, and and so, so that's one that I didn't even put a slide for, just the conversations that happen in the space. But in addition, we partner with different um, departments on campus to provide resources. So one such partnership has been the one between you know, Student Life, um, the counseling department, and us to have what we call Mindful Mondays. Before the quarantine, we had it was more of a meditation, it was a meditation um, thing that was happening at the center um, every Monday afternoon. And so we moved it into an online format in partnership with, uh, you know, like I said, counseling and student life. And so for this quarter, we invite you, you know, as you needing, a, you know, to learn some techniques or tips on how to keep some sanity in the middle of a quarantine. Um, to participate in that. Um, a lot of students who've participated in the past have really found it valuable. Um, so that's one example. Now, the other bullet point of the our purpose was student advocacy. And so, like I said, as challenges come up, uh, are mentioned to us through you know, the peer mentors who are talking with students or folks emailing us, um, one thing that we, we like to do is make people aware of what their resources are and, and being able to stand and advocate for them uh, if need be. So should you have a situation in, in your classroom or as you were working with a, a staff member and you felt like there's a sense of it has been a bias or you've been treated unfairly, you know, you can always reach out to the DIC via our email um, and then a student worker from the space or myself or Quentin will be able to point you to the right resource, institutional resource to deal with those situations. So we, the institution has a bias reporting form. Um, our center has what we call a negative experience form. Uh, and based on what you share with us, we might be able to guide you in the right direction so that the issue is addressed. Um, so in some cases, it's just an FYI. Um, so that, you know, some measures can be taken in order to prevent that from happening in the past. But in other times, they might need some advocacy where we'll have to call on your behalf and help you navigate that situation. So the point being, we don't want any student to feel alone navigating situations that uh, they feel are racially based or bias based. Uh, we want them to know that they have a support through the center. And so this is one way to be able to kind of get that support and we'll direct you in the right direction. So I'm pausing there in case there's any questions or comments with, with that piece. If not, moving right along, you know, the third, you know, uh, piece of this tool there is the education and training. As I mentioned, we do a lot of trainings, a lot of, a um, um, lot of events, a lot of workshops, as you can see. Um, and I'm going to list a few examples of those. Um, and uh, these are the typical topics that we offer from our space. So in the shoes of an immigrant, which is kind of uh, getting people um, 
to empathize, to understand what the experience is of an immigrant. Um, and uh, in this quarantine age, uh, actually, I might kind of tweak that a little bit to talk about, you know, the similarities of the immigrant experience um, to what we are all experiencing in the technological world right now. <laughs> we, you know, it's it's new environment, a lot of needing to learn and forego the things that we used to do and the way we used to do them and figure out how what the new normal is. And so there's a lot of opportunity to, to draw some empathy with what immigrants experience and you know how they navigate power dominant culture um that that's really yeah this is really a great opportunity for us to empathize with min minorities uh, in general fostering inclusion is another topic that we provide out of the center transforming othering through empathy i'm not going to go in depth with <laughs> all those topics but you know if any of those seem interesting you know if your faculty uh, or staff lead and you would want any of those for your departments um, you know, you can request those through our web page. Again, here I'll ask for help from Robert or Quentin to kind of copy and paste that into the chat window for those who will be interested. Um, but these topics are all listed in there uh, on our web page, and you can request them. Um, you know, obviously this quarter is kind of a crazy quarter. So um, what we typically do is we'll send out a call for request. Um, by a certain time in order to do our planning for the following quarter. Um, so for so you can look for an email to come out, um, you know, by the tail end of the spring quarter, asking for folks to submit their requests for next fall so that we can kind of plan with regards to capacity and bandwidth and all that. But for this spring, um, there's some of those that we won't be able to do online just because of the nature of the, the topics. We haven't had enough time um, to be able to figure out what does it look like in a virtual environment and maintain some safety um, and privacy for students um, because there's some norms and guidelines that are optimal for some of these topics. But others we have been able to do, like, you know, just yesterday I had a session of the Transforming Othering Through Empathy with a faculty for their class. So go ahead and put your request in and we'll try to accommodate them as much as possible and we'll work with you to see what makes sense. Um, then we have one coming up, like I was mentioning earlier, in the shoes of an immigrant. That's going to be May 7th, uh, between 1 and 2.30. We're going to do it through Zoom. Um, and uh, that is uh, um, one that has been um, welcomed very well. People have, have enjoyed that, that session. Again, like I was saying earlier, really helps us understand uh, the experience of moving into a space that is not wasn't yours and that one that you understand with different norms and, and 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 expectations and so hopefully by understanding that we can be more aware of folks who are navigating our different spaces our classrooms um and they have to figure out how to navigate it so with that you know the safe zone training is also another topic that we should we um um we, we train uh, departments out of um and i'm just gonna pause here and you know, the bullet points are there on the screen, but I'm certainly going to have Quentin, uh, I'll put him on the spot there for a little bit, just to share if there's anything you want to share uh, about the safe zone, because uh, Quentin is one who facilitated these trainings out of the center. Q, is there anything you want to uh, add to, to what is on the screen there? Um, <clears throat> not, not a whole lot. It's pretty self-explanatory. So safe zone basically is just talking about um, all of the identities and complexities um, that comes with um, those who identify as being a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and it just provides a little bit more, um, a more informational context for people uh, in regards to terminology, in regards to um, the difference in how people identify and what that means. Um, and it's a really good way to just kind of understand if you are a student leader, a faculty member, um, or a staff person who are interacting with students, um, to just understand how um, identity is important, pronouns, and all of those things, um, but also allowing the person that is a part of this workshop to kind of be able to think outside the box. Um, and to understand uh, if I do encounter someone who identifies with um, a multitude of different identities, 
Um, how do I go about that? What should I do? Um, and so it's pretty much um, a guide, whole handing or guidance along the way of interacting with students, staff, or faculty in particular um, who um, identifies uh, within the community. And so um, because the conversations are very um, complex and nuanced, um, that's the purpose of the training. So. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and so typically what will happen is as folks uh, complete so those two sessions for this workshop and as people complete them, we get um, a some sort of a um, I don't want to call it certification, but um, a stamp that they've completed the program. And um, it's a kind of visible sign, as you can see on the slide there, that they will be able to um, to display somewhere in their, their spaces so that it communicates to um, folks who are part of the LGBTQ plus identities to know that okay, this, this, this is a staff member or faculty member who's been and they can, um, it's kind of a safe space if you will. Um, so, um, yeah, and then I have referred to this a little bit earlier, but these are in terms of events that are um, coming up this quarter. Um, obviously, you know, in the issues of the immigrant, um, we had the Transforming Othering Empathy yesterday, and then Hot Tea Hot Topics, which is a partnership in partnership with the Student Life. Um, a, a wide range of topics will be talked about. Um, I really, uh, this is just the first imminent date, but there will be other dates that will be provided. So well, I recommend that you just, and I'll show you in a little bit in a slide, how you can stay connected to, to receive updates. Um, but some emails are being sent out um, on a regular basis between Robert Lane, who's the director of Student Life, um, and or myself or Quentin uh, to reiterate or outline some of those events that are coming up. Um, but I think on April 30th, we have the first hot tea and topics um, and discussing uh, privacy in the area of data mining, data sharing, and facial recognition. Um, so that's going to be the first topic of conversation, and there's more topics to come. Um, and then, you know, so the question probably on your mind is, great, all this stuff sounds good, you know, but how do we engage with the center, especially in this virtual quarantine um, world. So um, very, very simple ways here. First one would be an invitation for you to, um, you know, add to your Canvas list of courses, the DIC. So we have this DIC course that is available for everybody to opt into. Um, so if you haven't yet, uh, the link is provided at the bottom of the screen. And one more time, I appreciate your help, Quentin or Robert, to kind of copy and paste this link and put it into the chat window for folks. But yeah, upon visiting that link, you are able to add the DIC course to your Canvas uh, courses. And the things that you can expect to get from that, and in, you know, just a, a heads up, we are progressively building this, this shell. Um, and But the, the, the thinking and the vision there is that it's gonna be a space where you're gonna get event updates. So if there was to be a change of time or or a new event that I haven't even talked about here, or some of the subsequent topics on the Hot Tea Hot Topics series, that you'll be able to get the information um, of those events when they're happening. You know, in addition to event-related news, we will be providing through that course any information around scholarships uh, or grant resources um, that are available. You know, every once in a while, there are grant and scholarship opportunities that come from our community partners and. Um, and just having a centralized space where we can put the information um, for folks and community resources. Who else is in that community um, to support um, you, given your unique set of needs? Uh, if you if you're a friend with someone who you know is part of the LGBTQ plus um, 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 uh, community, uh, and you know you're wondering what sort of support there are out there, you know that will be a good space where we'll be providing those kind of information. Um, just to name a few. Um, and then education and training resources. We're trying to build a database there with resources. You know, sometimes people will come and say, hey, I just, man, do you have like a, a brochure, a quick um, information around, you know, systemic racism? You know, what is, the, what is that? Or, you know, and the list goes on. So we want to be able to house some training resources, um, you know, on, on some of those critical topics 
Um, and so in case you have questions or you want to kind of brush up on certain things and having that can be a resource. So um, some of these pieces of the, the, the Canvas course are being built and populated as we go. Um, so some of them have more information than others, but I certainly invite you to, to be able to, in, you know, enroll into that class um, so that you can keep up with some of the good stuff that we will be putting in there. Um, and then, you know, another way to engage is just to participate, right? And I know there's a lot going on. This is an unprecedented time for, for everybody. And so we totally understand um, how communicate information is just coming at, at a fast pace. Um, however, you know, as much as that is possible, uh, given your reality, um, you know, we invite you to, to join in some of those events that we're posting. Um, we do um, do so, you know, thoughtfully as we partner with uh, uh, different partners, like, the, like I mentioned earlier, the counseling department, um, student life, um, you know, and, and we'll continue thinking about different, uh, even faculty, and we'll continue thinking about um, critical players to provide information and events that will be relevant and helpful for you. Um, so, so yeah, participate, participate. Another way to participate is joining community forums. Um, what those are, are just opportunities to build community or to stay in community. Um, it can be lonesome, you know, to be practicing social distancing, um, uh, and kind of lose for those, especially who are more relational and they, they used to have their, their crew of people they would hang out with on a regular basis in the center. Um, we wanted to have some sense of continuity as well um, with that in an online format. So there's a few spaces there that you can see listed with the Zoom meeting numbers. Um, and so jot those down, the ones that are of interest to you and join them. These are weekly gatherings, if you will. Um, very open-ended, folks come, they can engage in conversations or they can just be doing their school work while you know, they're still connected and then ask a question at, at, at some point. You know, I, the last time I was at the one with uh, students with young kids and we were just doing, you know, my, I was doing my work, the other student was doing their work and then all of a sudden, you know, their kid just was just driving them crazy. <laughs> and then they, they just mentioned and said, how are you navigating like some sort of a, you know, routine at your house, you know, with homework and schoolwork. And I was like, Hey, check out, have you heard about this website? And I checked out, I sent a link to this website that I've been printing out uh, school worksheets from. And that was like lifesaver for the student. They were like, Oh my goodness. I didn't know about this. So those forums can be just places to, to land some, some, some good stuff that can help you because there's a similarity in terms of the experiences that you might be going through. Um, and so with that, that's essentially it. Um, that's what we, we got going on for this quarter. So I wanna open it up now for some questions um, related to the content or anything else that comes to mind. Hi, everybody. This is Sally. I should get myself on video here. Hello. Hey, Sally. Hi. It's good to see all of you. I just wanted to check in and support the uh, DEIC and just to say hello and to hear what, what's going on. And uh, actually, a question I've got is those great uh, community forums that you have, are those going to be posted um, on your web page or... Um, can you send those out? I'm just thinking about at times where I'm working with students and like the one with, you know, students with kids. Uh, I, I would just love to be able to easily reference those numbers. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think there was, and we'll continue sending some of the communications. I mean, there's so much that <laughs> goes through in the first couple of weeks. Um, yes. So um, we, one, we're navigating the tension between um how to send a mass email versus like i love what you're saying like you're working with a particular student and you know that there's a need there and you want to yeah. provide them just in time <clears throat> um so right now one of the best way we've done this is been through the ignite no, not the ignite the dic web course uh canvas course where oh okay roll into that so that we can provide because there's then already a sense of the person needed that information um, and then we can share some of those through there. 
Um, but we'll continue thinking about, especially with our key partners like you, you know, yeah. with the list so that you have it. Um, if, if you wouldn't mind doing that to just email it to me, yeah. um, because then I, I can just reference those numbers. You know, yeah. I won't widely share them, but just with an individual student to be able to share those numbers. But then it's also a good reminder to encourage students to sign up for the DEIC Canvas course. Can yeah. they just do that themselves or how do they register? Yeah, so that's something that um, I had sent an email to the whole campus and the students. We will try to oh, we'll post okay. it on the website as well. There's a there's a hard link that they just need to click on. Okay. Um, and so that went to students in an email. Yeah. So I'll send that to you as well. Um, and, and we'll, you know, at some key times during the quarter, we'll just keep sending it to, you know, I'll yeah. And, and uh, if it was in the email, like announcing this, then I've got that link. Okay. Yeah. So. No, no, no worries. It's it, as part of our communication plan. We're, we're thinking about <laughs> sending these. Uh, many many times as well um, because things get get lost but yeah yeah okay. right now that's the easiest way we're gonna try to connect it to our web page as well um, okay. so that um, folks can access it from there um, and then some of these forums um, will will explore how we can make them more visible as well um, I know that in that first initial communication that we sent out we advertised um, the student of color group one, the student with disability one, and the LGBTQ plus and questioning students one. Um, we are gradually opening up the 2020 graduation class and students with young kids because initially we wanted to focus on the Ignite students. Um, sure. but, but the need is growing right now. Well, there's not, people are not engaging as much online, so we want to make sure that others who need it, who are beyond just Ignite, can also take advantage of such a forum. So mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. way to make it more visible. Yeah, um, yeah. You, yeah, and thanks for the information. And I can appreciate the, all the balancing and sorting that you guys are doing about advertising, not overwhelming people with information, not getting the numbers out there so much that then you're at risk of getting Zoom bombed. You know, it's like... Yeah, but just if I could have the numbers that would, yeah. that would just help me one-on-one -on -one with students. No, that sounds great. It's great. I'm excited with the forums that you guys are doing. That's cool. Good, good. No, thanks for your willingness, as always, to want to utilize what we're putting out there to support the students. So. Yeah, I want to help spread the word and make sure students that could benefit are getting the info. Yeah, so. totally. Well, it's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, too. I'll, I'll mute myself and give um, others an opportunity. Any other questions from anyone? I mean, everybody else I know. <laughs> it's, 